This video is sponsored by Teleport, a free open source secure access platform. Learn more about how to get started with Teleport and the challenge that I'm going to be offering in a few moments. Recently, I have received a few comments asking for an updated cybersecurity setup overview. So in today's video, I'm going to be overviewing my personal and work environment setup and the equipment that I have. If you don't really care to watch this video, all the equipment will be in the description below. And yes, just like every standard person on YouTube, there are Amazon affiliate links. I'm gonna be overviewing all of my setups. So this is gonna be a while. I'm gonna to try to go quickly and show everything. So we're gonna start out with my personal device setup. In regards to my personal setup, not a ton has changed within the last three years. There's been little add-ons here and there. Right, so starting out with what powers my personal workstation, it's a Lenovo X1 Carbon Ultrabook 6th generation, which has 16 gigabytes of RAM, an 8th generation Intel Core i7 processor. I do have a review video out on my channel I did a couple years ago. This laptop has really stood the test of time. I'm able to run multiple VMs, edit my videos, and do different types of work. I've had this device for over four years and it really, besides overheating issues, has not had any issues. Next is the monitors. I get asked this question all the time. These are the Dell D-Series 31 and a half inch monitors. I got these at Costco for $220 each about three years ago. And if you look at the current price on Amazon, they're a lot more. So I really enjoy these monitors. They've been great. Next is my Velocifier VM01 brown switch keyboard, which is backlit. I do love the clickety-clack of brown switch keyboards. For my audio, I have the Audio-Technica's ATH-M 40X. They are great headphones. I do have the Brainwave ear pads on them. Uh, the stock ones that came with it were not great, but the Audio Technicas provide great audio. And then for my external audio, I have the Logitech Z200 PC speakers. These are great affordable speakers for just listening to music or stuff in your room. For my mouse, I'm using the Logitech M05 USB wireless mouse. It does the job and it's pretty affordable. My equipment stands on a FlexiSpot EW8 electric standing desk. A standing desk is something I highly recommend if you don't have one. It just adds for greater productivity. This is a quality desk. Full disclosure, FlexiSpot did send me this desk about two years ago and it's held up pretty well. It has four little settings that you can use and yeah, it's a pretty good desk. Now moving on to my audio setup, I have the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone, which is powering this voiceover here. I do have a Focusrite Scarlett Solo USB audio interface, which allows me to use the XLR cable and USB to plug into my computer. And then I do have a InnoGear microphone arm stand, which allows me to extend the microphone back and forth when I'm doing voice calls or voiceovers like this one. And then just for the miscellaneous, I have an on laptop cooling pad, which is no longer available. Got this like 10 years ago. Now, because the Lenovo X1 Carbon only comes with one HDMI port and two USB, I need to extend the capabilities. So for my USB, I have two Sabrent 4 port USB 2.0 and one USB 3.0 port. They do the job. And as you can see, that's just a complete mess of wiring. To power my second monitor on the right, I have a pluggable USB 3.0 to HDMI video graphics adapter. This small adapter was expensive, but definitely worth the price. I've had it for roughly three years and I've had no issues with it. I highly recommend not cheaping out on one of these. For adding extra storage, I have a Seagate backup plus ultra drive, which is two terabytes. So I have to I definitely have more storage given these videos and stuff uh, because I only have 512 on my Lenovo. And finally, I have a few Amazon Basics HDMI mail to mail cables. And that does it for my personal workstation. So it's definitely not ideal given that I have to extend a lot of like the USB ports, HDMI storage, all of that. But when I was a university student, this laptop allowed me to have both a powerful little home lab environment and also take this to class. So definitely still riding out on this uh, device for now, but I probably will be changing this within the next year. Uh, and, you know, I get a lot of questions asking me still, why do I use Windows? Windows 10 is what I'm using. And primarily that is because I'm locked into the Adobe Creative Cloud uh, ecosystem, which allows me to you know edit these videos and do other stuff. Uh, I will be probably building a desktop PC or tower within the next probably year. Uh, 
we'll see. I think this has been good enough. Next is my work setup. What am I running there? But I'm not going to overview my environment that I'm working on just because OPSEC, I don't really know. It's not that great anyway. Starting off, as you can see, I have a huge monitor. It's a Dell U4919DW Ultra Sharp 49 curved inch monitor. It's a lot of words there. This was a major investment that I invested in earlier this year. I wanted to try out the 49 curved inch monitor experience and this monitor has been great. And given my other two monitors that I have, I really do like the Dell monitor setup. Hosting this monitor is the FlexiSpot EF1 Essential Two Tier Standing Desk that is 49 by 28. This has been a great desk. I like how it hosts the big 49 inch monitor up on top. And I can also stand while working all day because I work from home. Uh, full disclosure again, FlexiSpot did send me this desk about six months ago. Really have enjoyed it. I do like FlexiSpot desks. So on my main desk, I have the Macly USB wired mouse. It's a cheap mouse that I have as well as just a cheap little mesh Dell 2GR91 slim keyboard. Again, very cheap does the job. Next to my keyboard and mouse, I have a little smart coffee warmer. It's called Bestkin Kits. I don't know. It's some cheap provider, but it's done a great job. I like having warm coffee throughout the day and I drink a lot. And then finally, I have a little Amazon Basics mouse pad as well as StarkTech USB-C multi-port adapter. That's it for my work setup. It's not very sophisticated. If you do work from home, I recommend segmenting your personal space from your workspace. From my personal experience, having the two separated allows me to focus on my personal work when it's personal work time and work time when it's work time. So based on today's setup, as you can see, I have many different heterogeneous environments such as my security home lab and the personal PC. And in today's video, I have a personal challenge for you. Now this sounds trendy, but trust me, I think this would be a really fun project idea and something that I am going to be completing here in a future video. It's called a passwordless home lab. Now, in order to accomplish this, you can use an open source technology such as Teleport. Teleport is free and there's seriously no gimmicks. This service provides a passwordless approach to logging into your infrastructure. Here's how Teleport works. You have an auth service, which acts as the certificate authority for a cluster. This issues certificates to clients and maintains an audit law. Now, a cluster can be users and servers, and these users and servers must authenticate and receive these certificates. Once these devices receive the certificates, a proxy service is set up to allow access to cluster from the outside world. Once you're authenticated into the service, your device will receive a public certificate and the auth service will have that private certificate and these certificates will expire after a period of time. So now you can go into your internal applications, whether that's through SSH, Kubernetes clusters, Windows RDP, whatever it is, and these certificates are managed for you. So like I said, the challenge is go out on Teleport, read more about this approach, and configure your own passwordless home lab. It's a really fun exercise, and seriously, there's no gimmicks. And in an upcoming video, I'm gonna be working on this challenge myself. Thanks to Teleport for sponsoring today's video, and this is a really fun little lab. Finally, there are two little other setups to talk about. One is my YouTube setup for my camera. I have a Canon EOS M50 Mark II. It's done the job. I have the standard lens. I've had it for since basically starting the journey on YouTube. And yeah, it's, it's, it's treated me well. On top of that is the Rode VideoMic Go lightweight. It provides decent enough uh, audio for my camera. And finally, I have the Geekodo 77 inch tripod stand. I have a couple of these tripod stands. They're solid. And then finally, my cybersecurity home lab, which was an old gaming desktop PC. This device has an old graphics card, an AMD processor, and a small terabyte hard drive, eight gigabytes of RAM. I do run Ubuntu 18 on this. It's a little bit outdated. And typically what I used this device for was just throwing up some virtual machines and having an isolated environment. And then finally, for a few miscellaneous items, I have a Palo Alto 220 that does not have the power cord. And the power cord is a lot 
money. Uh, so I have never turned this thing on and I do really want to experiment with this one day, even though it's kind of an outdated firewall. I also have a qubit cell, which acts as my backup for my most important files. This device was sent to me about six months ago. It's a good little device for your backups. So there you have it. That is the setup. Like I said, lots of stuff and, uh, yeah, hopefully you found this somewhat informative and, um, well, until the next video, have a good day.